Well, hi everyone. I'm so glad you joined us today to worship our Almighty God. I'm Pastor Slice. And I'm Kyla. And we hope this interactive video helps you grow in your faith. Oh yeah. Well, this interactive video this week is going to start with worship. But what is worship anyway? What well, actually comes from an old English word, worth ship it has something to do with someone being worthy and of course we know that god is worthy and so we bring him honor we bring him glory we bring him worship worship right that's what we're all doing and we're doing that in all kinds of different ways we're doing that with singing we're doing that with raising our hands we're doing that with bowing down possibly praying speaking certain words um, all these different things you might even want to clap along with some of the songs and we're going to start today with singing the songs, Here I Am to Worship. And in that song, there are a few different things you can already do. It talks about bowing down, and it talks about saying that you're my God. So there's different ways of worship already in this one song. So let's begin with worship. So we bow down before you and we honor you. Help us, Lord, to do that well as individuals, but help us to do that together as a, as a group of believers, a group of followers. May we worship you well. So here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say Well, to 
today we want to talk a little bit about some of the big days on the church calendar in the church year. And some of those days you really know quite well and you're rather excited about. And some of those days you're probably, huh? What's that even? Never even heard of it. Did you, for example, know that this past Thursday it was Ascension Day? Yeah, Ascension Day. Anyway, you're going to take your first break and... Uh, and, and we've got a bit of a game for you. We've got a puzzle for you that Kyle put together. And so there will be a slide, and it'll have all the big days of the church year on there, all the big Christian days. And you get to line them up. You get to say which one comes first, and which is next, and which is next. And you get to talk about what each day remembers. It's all about Jesus. All these days have something to do with Jesus. So go ahead, try to solve this puzzle, and then come right back. Well, did you get them all? Did you know what all those days were all about? Uh, my guess is that there's a couple on there that you're maybe not quite so sure about. Monday, Thursday, might be a little bit iffy about that one. And then the one we already mentioned, Ascension Day. What was that all about? Well, Kyla's going to read to you the story of Ascension Day. So here we go. Luke 24, 50 to 53. When he had led them out uh, to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he lifted them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. There you go, Ascension Day. I mean, it's just a really big word about Jesus going up into heaven. There's this cloud and all of a sudden, I mean, can you imagine being there that happens? It's like, what just happened? Anyway, we're going to sing a song about this first. We'll talk more about it later, Ascension Day. We're going to sing a song, uh, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. And actually, this song talks about several of the big days. Let's see if you can pick them up, okay? Pick them up. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. sure that everybody picked out the big days in that chorus. Here we go. You came from heaven to earth. What's that about? Jesus leaving heaven to come to earth. That's Christmas, right? Came into the world as a little baby. Why did he come? To show the way from the earth to the cross. What's that about? Which day? Good Friday, right? That's Good Friday. He was nailed to the cross. Why did he do that? My debt to pay from the cross to the grave. Which day is that? Still Good Friday. And from the grave to the sky. Oh, that is like two days. Easter and Ascension Day, right? Easter, he rose from the dead, and on Ascension Day, he went into heaven. Lord, I lift your name on high. Okay, once together. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. know that Jesus going into heaven is not the end of the story. Next week we'll be celebrating uh, Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came, right? The Spirit of Jesus came to live in us. 
And then, of course, one day in the future, Jesus will return just the same way that he left. That'll be an amazing day. Everybody will know it. Everybody will see it. We look forward to that day. Uh, but for now, why don't you take a break and talk together about what Jesus is doing while he is in heaven right now? I mean, we don't often think about that. But what's Jesus up to in heaven? Talk about that and then come right back. Jesus ascended into heaven. He rose into heaven. It's not something we often think about. It's certainly not something we celebrate as a church, but maybe we should because it is a pretty important part because what we believe about Jesus affects the way we live. What we believe about anything affects the way we live. I mean, think about this for a moment. If I get up in the morning and I believe it's going to be cold outside, I wear warm clothes. If I believe it's going to be warm outside, well, shorts and a t-shirt it is. What we believe about something affects the way we live. What we believe about Jesus affects the way we live. And that's where Ascension Day comes in. This is why it's important for us to remember it and to think through for a moment what that is all about. What Jesus is up to in heaven. Anyway, I said I was going to go through some of those big days on the church calendar. I'm going to do that. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about what each of these days has to do with what we believe about Jesus and how it affects the way we live. Christmas. Well, you know that one. It's about Jesus being born. Now, if all you believe about Jesus is that he was born as a little baby and laid in a manger... If that's all you believe, like so many people in the world today, well, they know that Christmas is about Jesus being born, and that's about where it ends for them. Well, if that's all you believe, it probably won't really affect the way you live, except at Christmas time when you throw a party and you give gifts and all that. The next big day we talked about in the puzzle was Palm Sunday, Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Again, um, the people at the time when he did this, when he was riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, thought that they were waiting for a Messiah, for this victorious warrior king. They were waiting for somebody like King David in the Old Testament. And then when Jesus showed up on the back of a donkey, it didn't really fit. And they were kind of disappointed because Jesus did not go beat up on the Romans who were in their land. And if, if we believe the wrong things about Jesus, we too might just think that he's just going to fix all our problems in his life. And then we're going to be all disappointed that he didn't. Because, well, what did Jesus say? We've talked about this the past couple of weeks. In this world, you will have trouble, right? So what we believe about him is going to affect the way we live. Next big day, Maundy Thursday. You probably didn't really recognize that one, but we usually get together as a church to celebrate the Lord's Supper because that's what Jesus did. Just before he was arrested, he, he, he had supper with his friends and he, he took a part of that supper and said, do this in remembrance of me, right? And, and then he, and he told them, a new command I give you to love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Oh, yes. Love one another. That's not an easy thing to do. Again, what we believe about Jesus is going to affect the way we live. If we believe that Jesus indeed told us this, to love one another, well, then we're going to be loving. If we don't believe that, we just may become really mean people to each other. Anyway, that was Monday, Thursday. The next one, Good Friday. Uh, Jesus was tried, he was arrested, tried in the court, right? He was beaten, and eventually he was killed on the cross and then laid in the grave. And then a horrible story, of course. So what's so good about Good Friday? Well, what's so good is not that Jesus died, but that he died for our sin, right? He died so that we can live, and that is just really good. He died, he took the punishment for our wrongdoing, for our bad stuff. He was punished. And he did that willingly. Oh, that is what's so good about Good Friday. And then, of course, Easter. Many people celebrate that one. Everybody knows what that's about. Jesus rose from the dead. And, and because Jesus rose from the dead, we believe that we too will rise from the dead. Our bodies will die. And, but at some point, we're going to be given new bodies. right? And, and we're going to be living with Jesus forever. Oh, that's possible. Life Eternal life is possible because Jesus rose from the dead. 
And then there's Ascension Day, that was the next one, and then finally Pentecost. We're going to be celebrating that next week, Sunday, and that's going to be all about the coming of the Holy Spirit, Him living in us, us never being all alone again, us being equipped to do good stuff, like He's going to help us do these things by His strength, right? But Ascension Day, we want to talk about that today. What does it tell us about Jesus that is so important for us to know so that we can respond right? Well, close your eyes, just, just pinch them shut, and think about for a moment, what do you see, what, what, what do you, what's the picture in your mind when you think of Jesus? If you had to try to picture Jesus, what would that look like? Right? Just close your eyes. What's the picture you have of Jesus? Is he, uh, maybe what's his hair like? Uh, is he tall? Is he short? Is he kind of medium? Is he strong? Is he, is he, like, what does he look like? Now we're going to go to the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. If you have a Bible handy, you can grab that and read along. But in Revelation chapter 1, we see that John, one of Jesus' friends, has a vision of Jesus after he ascended into heaven, right? So, so, so Jesus is in heaven. He has already died. He, he, he's been buried. He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He rose into heaven. And then John has a vision, and he describes what he saw. And it's kind of a strange picture. It's probably not going to be anything like what you just thought of when, when I asked you to close your eyes. So here, this is, this is what we read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. So he has a vision, and he hears hears this voice behind him. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. You probably didn't really... Picture that, right? A long robe and a golden sash across his chest. Anyway, that's how John saw him. And and he goes on with the description. But before we read that, he also said, I saw someone like a son of man. And that's a really important phrase. If if we need to understand what, what he meant by son of man. Because you might just say, Well, there's a man and, and he has a son, and like I, I'm a son. Of a man, right? Like my dad had a son, son of a man. But that's not what the Bible talks about when he says, when it says son of man. If we go back to the Old Testament, to Daniel chapter 7, we read a couple verses here, and it begins to tell us a little bit about what son of man really means. Daniel too had a vision. He says, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. Ooh, I mean, we sing that song sometimes, right? Behold, he comes riding on the clouds. Right? Who are we talking about? Son of man, riding on the clouds. We're talking about Jesus, right? There before me was like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days. Ancient of days is a, is a name for God Almighty. And was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I saw someone like a son of man. By the time that Jesus' friend John writes this, everybody understood what son of man was all about. It was about that vision of Daniel. This was about the Messiah, the Christ. This was about this ruler, the eternal ruler, who had all this power and authority. I saw someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. I mean, listen to this. The hair on his head was white like wool. You probably didn't picture that either. As white as snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. 
In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. I mean, that's a strange description of Jesus, isn't it? It might even kind of be a little scary. I mean, a sword coming out of his mouth? It's probably not what you and I think of when we think of Jesus. Right? But that is Jesus, a description of Jesus after he ascended into heaven. It's a picture of him being a ruler, the authority, having power, being the judge. He's, so it's not him as a baby, or not him sitting on the back of a donkey riding into Jerusalem, like what we remember on Palm Sunday. It's not like him sitting down with his friends having the Lord's Supper, do this remembrance of me. It is not him hanging on a cross or laying in a grave, but him alive as the master, as the ruler, as the power and authority. What's Jesus up to today? After his ascension, this is what he's up to today. He is seated at the right hand of God, a place of honor and, and, and authority and glory. Oh, yeah. And to some degree, that description we just read, well, it's kind of scary, isn't it? That, especially that sword part and the eyes that are like fire, like that's like, whoa, and the brilliance of the sun. It, it's just kind of scary. And indeed, John, his friend, was scared. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. I, I can't stand this holiness, this brilliance. It is, it is Jesus, he's just, he's no longer just, just the man that I knew, he, he's, he's God. So he's scared. But Jesus is also so gracious. And he's, then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I mean, we should be afraid because he's so great and magnificent. He is so awesome that we should be afraid. But Jesus says, don't be afraid. I am the living one. I am the first and the last. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. Oh, he died for you. He rose from the dead. He defeated the punishment of our badness, and, 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 and he has made it possible for us to be friends with him, even though he is so absolutely awesome in heaven right now. Amazing. What is Jesus up to today? He's the son of man. We just talked about. He's all, all that. And he's also incredibly loving and gracious. Now I said what we believe about Jesus is going to affect the way we live, right? If we just think of Jesus as a little baby in the, in, in the, in the, in the manger, well, it's not really going to affect our life much. But if we see Jesus as the Son of Man, this awesome Son of God. Well, it's going to affect the way we live. So I'm going to give you a chance to talk about this, to think about this. So take a break and take a moment first to be quiet, to think about this, what Jesus is like. Maybe get a different picture when you close your eyes of who he is. I mean, he's this amazing, awesome being. And you might want to read those verses again from Revelation chapter 1, that description. But think about and maybe talk about how we should live as followers of the Son of Man. And then come right back and we'll end the service together. Well, I hope you had a good discussion about how we now should live, knowing and realizing that Jesus is the almighty, eternal king, the ruler truly Lord, right? So how do we now live? Well, one of the things that we should keep doing is worshiping God, to remember who he really is and what he's all up to. So we're going to end this service with this one song called Behold Our God, and it kind of asks some really good questions. So as we sing these, don't just sing the words, try to, as we sing them, try to answer these questions, all right? So here we go.
celebrate that Jesus is our King. We'd love to hear your feedback, so feel free to send us a message, and hey, by all means, share the link to this video with your friends who might be encouraged by this as well, right? Anyway, next week, as we already said, we're going to be planning to talk about the Holy Spirit, so be ready for Pentecost next week, the birthday of the church. Until we meet again. Amen, sister.